Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I've always had this big dream, you know, the big dream of becoming a woman in power to be able to impact women's life. There's nothing more amazing than to be able to help someone in the development of themselves. Um, because I always had such great academic, uh, academic success, I always had people look up to me. And most of those people were women. They often came to me asking me on advice on how to become more confident or how they could get high grades. So I started off small. We made up a class of six and um, six women. We learned about each other. We learned about our strengths, our weaknesses, and how to make our strengths even stronger. Now, I realized something that at the end of the day, I didn't necessarily need to teach them about international relations, which was the course that we were studying, for them to, be, to get those high grades that they got. And some of them became even more confident than me. And I was happy, I was excited. I wanted to do more, I wanted to do more for women. I wanted to do more for not only those women that were near me, but also those that were far away. So I went on Facebook, I went on Twitter, on Instagram. I started to follow uh, important feminists, women empires. But something intriguing happened to me about two months ago. There's this feminist, um, she's Angolan, she's from Angola, and she posted a video and a picture. The video was um, a woman beating up a man and she had some sort of small weapon and she was calling him names and cursing him. It was a very violent video to watch. And the picture that followed uh, said that every woman should do the same. Now, because she was someone that people really look, look up to, I felt, I felt bad to see such a post coming from someone that calls herself a feminist. I decided to reply, you know. I thought perhaps it just slipped through. I replied to the post saying that um, I understand that indeed in Angola, gender inequality is still a big problem. But Perhaps you need to change your strategies a little bit if you want people to understand the real message. Now, what I was expecting was this amazing response. I wanted her to tell me, you know what, Winnie? So nice, you, you, you're attentive and you understand about feminism. And you know what? I'm having this event and I want you to take part. Let's work together. I wanted this positive response. But no, that's not how she replied to me. She replied to me calling me a misogynist. In other words, because I commented on her strategies, then I hate women and I'm against women's success. She also made a full video cursing me, calling me names, but amongst those curses, she told me something that brought me here today. She told me that I'm a nobody and I'm doing nothing for a woman, and I should say nothing about what she does. She was right and she had a point. And that's why I'm here today. I'm not here today because I was called a misogynist, or because I wanted to show her that I can do something for women too. No, I'm here today because of people like her that have so much power and so much influence. The whole media is on them. They have this important tool in their hands, but when they use it, they use it in the wrong way. They send the wrong message. And this wrong message is going to have an effect on each and every one of us, including men and women. I'm here today to tell you that there's a big difference between feminism and radical feminism, and that feminism cannot and shouldn't be associated with radicalism. We need to eliminate this radicalism from feminism in order for us to achieve that which feminism is still to achieve. Let me take you a little bit back on feminism. Feminism started off as this great idea. It was a very legitimate cause, the women were fighting for the things that we most, most of us now enjoy, we all have now. They were fighting for the right to vote, the right for freedom of expression. Um, it's because of feminism that I can stay here in front of you today, and I can speak for women and in front of women and for men. It's because of feminism that I can have a choice, you know? I can choose, I can choose to have a career in law, which I did, but I could also choose to be a stay-at-home mom if it's my choice. It, feminism came not to give us um, a one-way road. It came to give us a choice for us to have our lives in our hands and we choose what to make of it. 
This is what, why feminism, uh, this is, I'm sure this is why the early feminists were on the streets protesting. Now, what are my biggest concerns with radical feminism? My biggest problem with radical feminism, first of all, is the word radical in itself. When you tell someone that you are a radical, you don't give them space for them to sympathize with you, you know? One is on the extreme left and the other one is on the extreme right and we don't have a conversation in between. There's no meeting point and there's no cooperation. And if we want to move forward, then there should be cooperation. Uh, the second biggest problem is men hate. You know, um, the feminists of nowadays, they spend a lot of time publicizing hate towards men. This idea that every man is a victimizer and every woman is a victim. And if you are a man, then you are born with a certain disease and you cannot get rid of. There's nothing you can do to change it. It's like telling someone, um, hey, you are sick, you are born with a certain problem. There's nothing that you can do. Your actions cannot make it better, but we will punish you for it. <laughs> I'm sure you do not need to come from law school to understand how unjust this is. And this is what radical feminists do. Now, this idea that men do not care about feminism, they do not care about gender equality, they do not care about the equality of the sexes, it's completely, it's a big myth. And um, many men have shown great concern for feminism. We had, for example, Parker Pillsbury, he helped to draft the American Constitution of non-gender-based rights. And also nowadays we have um, our great actor Benedict Cumberbatch, we have Gordon Levitt, many males that push forward the equality agenda. And that, this is how it should be. Because when we isolate men, it makes it seem like, um, like feminism is a fight of women. Like we as women just want special privileges. Like we are claiming for something that we do not deserve. But feminism is a legitimate cause. And indeed, men do care about it too, because indeed they should. It's the fight of human rights for all. Gender equality is the fight for human rights for women, for women to be treated in a way that is equal towards men and before men. So it is equal opportunities. Um, instead of us publicizing this hate and having this fight, the battle of the sexes, women having to step on top of men to show that we are greater and we can do something too, we should cooperate and work together. You know, if we have such an amazing idea, such a legitimate cause like feminism, then we need the other 50% of the world to cooperate with us for us to achieve those goals. And that 50% is men and we cannot ignore them and we should all work together. My, my third biggest problem with radical feminism is this belief that every woman all over the world, we are exactly the same and we face exactly the same problems. I'm sure that the problems that I, as a black African woman here in Portugal face, are completely different than the problems that my friends are facing in Pakistan, in Iraq, or in Zimbabwe. And different problems need to be tackled differently. We cannot always just generalize. Um, my dad is a soldier, so I grew up to be this tough girl and he taught me how to defend myself and I was ready for this world that is, that is brutal for a woman to a certain extent. So I was ready to face it and I was prepared and I was ready for people to attack me and for me to defend myself. I was born in Angola and uh, at the age of 11 I moved to Namibia. And in Namibia the culture was so much different, the society was so different. Men had this belief that every woman is like your mom and you should treat her like your mom. And they were so respectful, they were so respectful towards women. And they were so humble and treated me so nicely. But I was prepared to respond to an attack, but there was no attack. And I didn't know how to fit in in that society. How was I going to act now if I was just ready to retaliate? So I... I ended up becoming a bully <laughs> because I could do anything I wanted to them. They would just accept and it um, wasn't a good thing. But I later moved to Turkey and the problems that I didn't face in Namibia, I later faced them in Turkey. I remember I never felt more invisible than I felt when I was in Turkey. It's like when you're, you're a woman, you're not, you're not human enough. You're not as much as a man. You're never, the you're never the subject of the matter, you know? 
um, whenever I would walk around in the streets with my cousin in Turkey, he would meet his Turkish friends, they would greet him and keep on talking, like I wasn't there. And he always had to say, hey, greet my cousin, you know? But the worst scenario happened when it was end of the month and I had to pay rent. And I used to stay alone, so. The landlord came to my house, he knocked the door, I opened the door and I was like, come in, come in, Sarah, let's sign the contract. And he told me, madam, man, and I smiled and I said, no, this is my house, I'm the one paying it. And um, he looked at me with a serious face and he told me, madam, no man, no contract. Now, it may seem a little bit funny now, but at that time, it, it shocked me. And I fought with him and I told him, sir, if you do not want the money, I don't mind holding on to the money for another month, it's okay for me. Uh, he came inside and we signed the contract. But I wasn't happy. I was disturbed, why? Because just to sign a contract, I had to fight for the right to be able to sign a contract in the 21st century. This happened a year ago. So about six months later, I moved here. About six months ago, I moved here to Portugal. I was like, woohoo, Europe. <laughs> I'm not gonna have to face none of those problems again. But uh, I, found, I found out that every time that I watched the news, it was always the same issue domestic violence, a woman being severely beat up by her husband, or a girl being killed by her jealous boyfriend. It made me rethink about feminism, that we are different women, and the culture and the society expects different things from us, and we have different problems, and those different problems need, need specific solutions for those problems. So it's impossible for us to always just generalize. But my biggest and biggest concern of radical feminism isn't about what they believe in. It's about how they go about things, you know? They have this idea that it doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter how you go about things, as long as you have a good cause, you go, girl, you know? This, is, um, this idea is completely archaic. And in the years that we live in, if you want people to take you serious for something that you believe in, you need to present it in an acceptable manner. I'm sure that many women here would agree with me that we no longer need to go around on the streets protesting naked in order for people to understand that we women do deserve equal rights. We no longer have to do like the picture that I saw. We no longer have to, have to make a statue of a woman's private parts and walk around with it on the streets to show that indeed gender, gender equality, inequality is still an issue. We have many, many different strategies, many methods that we can use to push forward our agenda. This is how it should be. What do I want you to take home today? I want you to understand that there's a big difference between radical feminism and feminism. And feminism is what we should focus on. The idea of equality, the idea of the equality of the sexes. Because at the end of the day, with radical feminism, what are we going to have? We're going to have the battle of the sexes like we already have now. Inside a marriage, outside, a woman and man always struggling, trying to show who can do more, who has more power. And I can do it too, you know? My friend told me um, a few weeks ago that feminists have become everything that they were fighting for. I hear many people telling me that they were called names and cursed mostly by feminists and not even men have done such things to them. And if radical feminism does not represent us as women, we should do something about it. We can't just stand back and say, no, it doesn't concern me, it's not my issue because the results are going to affect all of us. And the feminist ideas and agenda are not gonna be pushed forward. And that has an impact not only on women, but also on men, on the whole society. We cannot move forward if we have unequal treatment of people uh, just because of, their, um, because of their gender. The way, the way feminists go about things now, the way they focus on these things that don't, uh, don't really matter. It, it takes away the focus on what, of what feminism is supposed to be. I'm sure that those early feminists were not on the streets protesting for the rights for us to be able to walk around with our periods' bloods on the street. That's not really what they were focusing on. We have many, many other issues that are more urgent and need to be tackled urgently. Problems that still exist. Even here in Portugal, we still don't have equal pay between men and women. And we have serious issues such as the recent death of Nasra Hafi. Nasra Hafi was a 19-year-old girl. She was 
burned in public in Bangladesh. She was burned by her own classmates because she tried to report her teacher for sexually harassing her. Let me tell you why Nasra Hafi died. Nasra Hafi died because the people in her society did not believe that she had the right to say no. Nasra Hafi died because the people in her society thought that a woman cannot, she cannot reject to be put in situations that she did not feel comfortable with. I'm sure if she was a man and she reported, uh, he reported her teacher if she was a man, it would have been a different scenario and she wouldn't end up dead. But the main reason why Nasra Hafi died, it's because many women in the world still do not enjoy the human rights that we have, that most of us enjoy. And that is what we should focus on. And this is what feminism is supposed to be about. So what can you do different from today? Instead of just liking and sharing every feminist uh, quote or text or picture that you see, be more critical about it. Make sure it's not radical. Make sure it's not sending the right message. And don't support radical feminism. Don't say, I'm a woman, so I have to support feminism. No. We have to support, the way, we have to support an idea that is brought forth in a good way, not enticing hate. And when you see a picture, like the picture that I saw recently, a very disturbing picture of a woman, uh, two women that were giving free slaps to white cisgendered males on the streets, don't just like it and share it and think it's something funny, because it isn't. It's enticing violence, and that's not what feminism is about. Feminism is about equality. It's about fighting for human rights. Feminism is about defending the rights of people like, like Nasra Hafi that died a few, a few days ago, by the simple fact of she being a woman, she was killed. And this is what we should focus on. This is what we should fight for. So if you are a feminist, if you are a man, if you are a woman, if you have to fight for something, then this is what we fight for. We fight for equality. We fight for basic human rights for all, regardless of their sex, their gender, their race, their age. And cultures shouldn't be an excuse for people to be treated in, in an inhuman way. So we fight, we fight for freedom, freedom of expression. We fight for human rights for all. And if we have to publicize something, instead of publicizing hate towards men, then we publicize cooperation. And instead of, instead of publicizing misunderstanding and a battle of sexes, we publicize an understanding and we publicize love. Thank you.